Hey there, I'm Ian Douglas. I'm the author of the website, techinterview.guide. I'm here to help people with career advancement and interview preparation. My live stream on Twitch covers topics such as company research, how to build resumes and cover letters, applying for the job, getting through interviews, and what to do during negotiations. I've coached thousands and thousands of people over the years to get jobs at the biggest tech companies in the industry, and I'm here to help you too. The following episode is taken from a longer live stream event and may contain interactions with other people in chat. Check out the end of the episode for more information. Let's get to it. We had an anonymous question in the Discord community said, given two equally qualified job applicants, one from inside and one from outside the organization, how would you go about deciding which one to hire? As a hiring manager, my preference is always going to be to retain the talent that I already have or retain the talent that the company already has. So for me, it's about who's already on the team, how can we keep them on the team, and how can we uh, you know, keep them happy and transition them into something else that they would rather be doing. So if they've applied for another role in the company, that would be my very strong preference because they already know the company, they're already situated, HR is already you know, set up. Like it, there's, there's a lot less cost involved in sort of hiring them. Uh, as opposed to just doing like a lateral move into another department. So as a hiring manager, that would be my very, very strong preference. Now, sometimes when, when we compare, you know, people inside a company and outside the company, there are, there are other factors. Like anybody coming in is also coming in with kind of a fresh outlook and they're coming in with fresh perspectives where the person from the other team, they know how the company works. They know kind of how we've always done it. And sometimes that's not necessarily what we want on the team either. We kind of need that fresh look at things and we need that fresh perspective. And even if you're, you're coming from a different department, sometimes you're still bringing that extra sort of, uh, I don't want to call it baggage, but you're bringing over those old perspectives of this is how we've always done it. And sometimes you want someone new on the team that's going to bring, uh, like I say, kind of that fresh perspective and, and fresh viewpoint on things. So all things considered... I would prefer to keep somebody in the company, but sometimes hiring from outside is also important as well. So if I've got a role that's open and I'm just looking for someone to kind of cover the skill gap, like let's say I lost a, a really good person, like a programmer on my team that was really, really good at communicating with a database. Well, now I have that gap on my team. So I could go post a job post and, and try to hire somebody who's got that same level of programming skill, but also knows about database skill to continue to fill that gap. Or I can consider just hire anybody for the team and maybe send someone on my team who has an interest in, you know, sort of filling that, that sort of gap and say like, Hey, Ian, do you want to learn more about databases? I'm going to send you on some training because I need you to fill in for the person that left um, and, and cover like a little bit of extra knowledge there. If you already know about the systems and you already know about how things work, it's a lot easier to sort of train someone else up in the missing skill than to bring someone new on and you've got to train them on everything and expect that they can sort of jump in on the database stuff as well. So there's a lot of give and take that goes into those decisions as a hiring manager of who do we bring over to the team and why. If you're coming from a completely different department, like if you're coming from a department like you're coming over from customer service or you're coming from a QA type of role and you're getting into a software development job, I would also give preference to that internal person over an external person because you already know our business, you know the organization, and you are coming in with that fresh perspective because you haven't done software development for our company. Um, at least as far as like low level coding, if you've done QA work, you've certainly done a lot of automation and you've written a lot of tests and you've got kind of that mindset of like how those systems work. But as far as like the low level coding, you're bringing, uh, kind of that fresh perspective on that. But at the same time, you also have this preconceived notion of how these systems work and how they communicate. And, and again, you're bringing that bias that's already inside of the company. And so as a manager, I do need to weigh that as a consideration um, when looking at my candidates of like, do I want to bring in somebody completely fresh who's going to offer those kinds of perspectives? I'm more likely to bring in somebody new at a senior level than at an entry level uh, for those kinds of reasons. Um, if I had a junior opening, it's not to say I wouldn't ever hire a junior dev, but if I've got a junior uh, or somebody that wants to come into that junior role that wants to transition out of another department, I would certainly consider them. But uh, it does depend on what I'm looking for in that role and, and what kind of skill gap I have on the team and how I want to fill that. 
it is a bit subjective and it is a bit of a case by case scenario. But as a manager, I have a responsibility to the business to do what's best for the business. And sometimes that means hiring outside because you're bringing in that fresh perspective and those fresh ideas, as opposed to this is how we've always done it. But there is value in this is how we've always done it because you can hit the ground running much faster. There's less training involved. So it's not, it's not, a, not a great answer of it depends. I hate answering questions saying it depends. It really does depend on what we need on the team at the time. But these are some of the considerations I would go through as a hiring manager. Thanks for checking that out. I hope that you found it helpful. I always appreciate feedback, so please let me know what you think. I appreciate any subscriptions, so please tell your friends and colleagues about it as well. Check out the website techinterview.guide for more information about when I'm live streaming and all of my free content. Drop by a live stream anytime to ask questions or message me privately, whatever makes you most comfortable. See you next time.